Today's Blender tutorial is working with Blender 2.60 and we're going to be looking at the feature called uh, Quick Fur. Uh, I'm going to delete our default cube here and add in a UV sphere. And I'm going to hit spacebar and type in fur and you can see you have an option for Quick Fur and we hit enter and voila. Uh, let's render that out. You're not going to see uh, a whole lot of fur because it's very short here but there is fur around that sphere or on that sphere. Um, so with uh, that selected, let's pull this bar out here a little bit and go to our particles uh, tab here. And let's just increase the length, we'll say 0.5. There we go, now we got a little more fur. Let's actually see one, there we go. Length in ha of hair is one. And there you go. It's hard to see because the way the lighting is and stuff, and there's a lot of fur on there. I'm, in fact, I'm going to lower the number uh, from 1,000 down to 500 maybe be able to see each hair. There you go, we're getting there. Uh, let's add in a plane, scale that to 20. And um, I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to our world panel, I'm gonna enable ambient occlusion and uh, uh, environment lighting, and I'm gonna turn the ambient occlusion to multiply. We hit F12 now. Oh, we can definitely see the fur a whole lot better, or the hair is a whole lot better. Um, so now, now that we have that, uh, let's play around with it a little bit more and um, let's see if we can make it maybe uh, more fur-like in its movements. And we'll, we will actually uh, select the sphere and say cloth and make it a cloth. Um, yeah, whatever, any of these will probably be good for what we're doing. We're just playing around here. Um, let me hit. Uh, all day, see if anything happens. The sphere did move a little bit, but the fur didn't. Uh, let's now add in an empty shift A, empty. Let's go into top view, wireframe mode, grab that, move it over here so we can see it. And uh, in the physics panel with that empty selected, we're going to say force. And we're going to change that force to be a wind. So now this is a wind object. And as you can see already, it's blowing upwards. Let's uh, rotate it this way, and you can see how it's affecting our fur. So just like in real life, if the wind's blowing a certain way, the fur will follow. You can also adjust the strength of the fur, or strength of the, the wind. In fact, I'm going to probably lower it a little bit. Let's put it down to 0 0.5. And actually, maybe a little bit more, 0 0.6 play around with it a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to set some keyframes. So I'm at frame one here. I'll hit I, rotation. I will uh, go up a few frames, rotate it around this way, hit I, go up a few more frames, and rotate it back around this way and set a keyframe there. So now let's go to camera view. If I hit Alt A to view that animation, go back to our first frame here and hit Alt-A, you can see the uh, fur being reactive to the wind there. Um, let's go to render and we'll change the number of keyframes to 120, or number of frames to 120 since that's where our keyframes kind of end. I'm going to make that uh, an XVID and I'm going to save it as uh, fuzzy fur dot AVI. And um, let's change this resolution somewhat HD. I want to save on rendering time. I'm not going to go full 1080p. I'll do 720p. And that should all be good. Let's have one quick look at the render one frame. That looks fine to me. And I will click animate and it will start creating the animation of 120 frames. Right now on my computer Looks like it's rendering at about, where am I looking here? Just under three seconds a frame. So 120 frames, you do the math. I'll play the animation at the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a good